Okay, real estate people, here we are. I'm Bill Stevenson, this is Ken Cannon. We're both with Spotlight Realty and we're here in fall of 2023 to give you a market update. Ken, where are we in this market now and how did we get here? Well, it's been a crazy ride. Ever since uh, COVID hit, the market just kind of got turned on its head. We went from what was normally a predictable seasonal market with uh, steady appreciation around five to 10% um, on a high day. The money was still relatively inexpensive. Um, people were priority, their buying priorities shifted. They were looking right. for bigger places. They wanted to have home offices, that sort of stuff. And, and importantly, they wanted to live in the South and the Triangle. They didn't, right. you know, there's no reason to live in Manhattan anymore. Not because anymore. Everything, everything that was good about Manhattan was no longer good. Yeah. And so a lot of those people just came here. They came here. And then so, the, yeah, there was a, that influx. And we saw in those two years, from 2020 through 2022, we saw uh, 20%, 30% appreciation year over year in these local markets. Yeah, and that wow. was un that's unheard of. Yeah, here. amazing. Yeah, and so of course, with that, everyone uh, starts to get afraid, are we in the bubble? Are we seeing things, right. you know, yeah, are, we, are we seeing the, the top of the bubble? Is it going to pop? Yep. And um, that's just not the case. Uh, even when we saw um, the interest rates, which normally have a downward pressure, they have a downward effect on home prices as they increase. Uh, even as they began their journey upward last year, we didn't really see that. What we did see was more of kind of like a leveling off of the right. of the prices. Yeah, yeah. And um, as it stands right now, home values are, uh, the median home price has just gone back up to about just below where it was in peak 2022. Right. So, so we're sitting in a pretty good market right now. Yeah, still good. I mean, you would say, Home prices are flat. Home prices, maybe even some areas, a little bit down, but still pretty darn good. Yeah. If, you're, if you if you bought a home in 2019, you're still you're extremely still, happy. Absolutely, about it, right? Even you're in 2020. Yeah. Right? So. Yeah. Um, and if you're buying now, I, I don't think there's any concern. That there shouldn't be this concern of um, I'm buying at the top of the bubble. That was what I was getting a lot of feedback right. from my clients, or, or you know, concern from my clients, and saying, Are we? Are we? It's now the right time. Should we wait? to this settle? Yeah. And it's and what I tell them is, if this is it's not going to settle. There's a lot of there's still a lot of upward momentum. There's still a lot of upward pressure here on our market locally that um, that is driving that. Of course, inventory is one of those factors. Right. Uh, inventory was a problem pre-COVID. It became even more of a problem after COVID. And, and with supply chain issues and all of that stuff. So uh, so really they're playing a lot of catch up with that and new home construction is starting to catch up and we're seeing a lot of, uh, we're starting to see increases in new new home construction sales. However, it's just not filling in the gap. Right, right, there's still not enough inventory. Right, yeah, and, and one of the reasons I think there's not enough inventory, I think this is fairly well established, is that too many people today have mortgage mortgages are, that are an asset to them, right? There's only a 2% mortgage. You don't wanna just casually move and change that 2% mortgage into a 7% mortgage in your new home, right? So that isn't really happening. Those casual, like I'm, I'm living in the same town and I'm moving to a different place in the new town, those people are not moving, so that's why inventory is such a problem. Right? Yeah, that's a huge buy up if, if yeah, you, in yeah. terms of premium if you have to go in from a 2% to a 7% mortgage. Right, you wouldn't even change your home. You live in the same home and still pay a lot more. A lot more <laughs> yeah. for the same home. But yeah. what we are seeing though too now is um, because we did have that rapid appreciation though, there are more sellers coming to the market with equity in their homes. So right. They can then cash that out and use that as a um, to offset some of that mortgage premium. Yeah, so we're gonna get back to that in a little bit, but I just wanted to say when people ask me um, and, and ask you, ask us what, uh, are, are, is this uh, is the bubble going to pop? Is this a bubble? What's what's happening here? Um, I always say, well, we don't know the future. We likely know more than you do, but uh, we don't. We don't. We can't predict the future. However, the axiom always is just like you know, if you're building a home, if you wanted to plant a forest, the best time to plant a forest was a hundred years ago. The second best time to plant a forest is today, yeah. right? So yeah. it's the same thing with home buying, right? Yeah. You would really, you really wish you bought a home 20 years yeah. ago, but if you can't, if you didn't buy a home 20 years ago, don't try to wait for the next time when it's good to buy a home because it may never actually. Everyone occur. wants to get in the ground floor, and we're like, we're already up. We're already. We're already. <laughs> we're already exactly yeah, right. That elevator left. So, um, and it's going to continue to go up. Uh, there's, like I said. We were talking earlier, we were talking about uh, some of the tech jobs here, the institutions that have been in this area particularly that are going to insulate it through um, whatever economic pressures we might see coming in. Yeah, I always say, you know, when people are asking about the triangle, what it's like, what's the what's the economy like? I say, well, tech jobs come and go. We're, we're fairly strong with tech jobs. We had, saw a little weakness a few years ago with pharmaceutical jobs yeah. moving out of the moving out of the area. Those are mostly replaced by tech jobs, but we have at least three major universities and a few other not as major universities and the state capital. Right. And none of those things are going anywhere. They're not going anywhere. Yeah. So yeah. that so that really stabilizes. That puts a, a pretty high floor on the entire market. It, it does, and that that affects both rental markets and purchase markets. Exactly. Right. And then those 
rental markets in terms uh, they they then appeal to investors, which again creates that upward pressure. So there's just this like this this positive cycle on home values as uh, we can see continue to see prices um, go up. All right, so enough about the past. Let's talk about what's coming, what's in the future. Now, again, we're not soothsayers. We're not, we're not, uh, we don't have a crystal ball, but we, we do have some, some insider knowledge, let's say. So Ken, what do you see happening in the short to immediate term? Well, I, I see interest rates continuing to increase, which will obviously have an impact on a certain portion of the buyers. Mm -hmm. uh, cash buyers are going to be more uh, effective in this market in the fact that they can come in and pay the prices that are are required right so um, we're seeing I think more 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 moving to that direction um, I, I also see that new construction is starting to kind of get there it's yeah, starting yeah, like yeah. it's it's like a slow start but it's starting to get we've there. got a long way to go I mean we the, do the the, uh, the the notion is I think the NAR says that we're four million homes short in the country yeah. four million homes short of where we need to be in order to have a stable market so uh, you know, it's going to take a long time to build 4 million more homes than normal. Well, and the triangle alone is, is forecasted to grow by a million people over the next 10 years. Yeah. That's more than double the current population. Right. So those people have to live somewhere. Indeed. And, and, uh, and, and the homes that are being built now um, that seem, you know, maybe, uh, for instance, there's a project we're looking at uh, out in Wake Forest, 30 minutes from downtown Raleigh. And, and that, where it may have been a stretch before, mm -hmm. is now yeah, no longer stretch. I no mean, there's so stretch. many of the some of the, t the the most recent buyers I've been working with. So this is this is a geographical thing, right? It used to be that you know people coming to town wanted to live as close as possible to Duke University or UNC or to NC State or at RTP. And now people are saying, well, you know, I'll do with a 30, 45 minute commute. So I've sold homes in Mebbin, in Sanford, yeah, in yeah. Eflin, in, in all sorts of places that I had never sold homes in. These preferred markets. I suddenly have to be an expert in places yeah. that I've never been before. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of these towns are seeing that increase as well and, and seeing that attention. And again, with priorities shifting and people getting, wanting different things out of the homes that they live in, those areas become more appealing. Yeah. And that 30 minute drive to somebody who spent, you know, an hour commute in New York, that's, that's nothing for them to come here yeah, and, and do exactly that. exactly and, and in fact you know the um, the urbanization that's been happening over the the, the the trend toward people wanting walkable homes places with you know really central durham homes central uh, raleigh homes places like that i think that trend has slowed down considerably maybe that's also a remnant of covid right because covid you know it wasn't that important it's actually a downside to living in in um, highly dense, high dense yeah, yeah high density yeah, communities yeah. right so maybe that's what's driving people out a little yeah bit too. that and prices and some of the new construction is meeting that need as well by creating these um it, it, they're not just neighborhoods or they're, they're building you know amenities there that that yeah. supplement those neighborhoods and create actual spaces where people want to be so right indeed so, we're so seeing in, that. in short i think what we're, what we're saying is we're seeing um well a number of things just to summarize uh, we're seeing inventory levels still have a long way to go before they yes. catch up, right? So that's going to put upward pressure on prices, even as um, uh, interest rates continue to put downward yeah. pressure on prices. However, increased equity in, in people's homes is going to drive more cash buyers right. to be able to actually make some moves. And so that's going to improve things. I think you were saying that Lawrence Yuan was saying that things are going to improve by the early 2024. He's right? in just, yeah, he's, he's a very optimistic outlook, which uh, I, I agree with, um, but he's, he's seeing things kind of slowing down end of this year, picking back up beginning of next year as a lot of these new construction things start to unfold. The buyers that um, uh, maybe were shocked by six, 7% interest rates are starting to become more accustomed yeah. to them. Yeah. It's, like, you know? it's like a frog in boiling water. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. the yeah. temperature goes up a little bit. And <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. 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 Um, so yeah, exactly right. And you know, there's talking about in the 80s, we, if you couldn't do it with 10%, you could, you had no business doing it. So it's all a relative thing, right? Indeed. So, and, and as the market under, comes to understand that, that the interest rate is relative and it's changeable, you know, yeah. it's, you're not locked into something for 30 years, even though it might be a 30 year mortgage. There's, there's all sorts of strategic ways to go about buying and that as more people become aware of that, mm -hmm. more and more people are willing to step back into the market. Right, so we're saying that, again, inventory levels low, more cash buyers, um, maybe improving in, in 2024 with uh, more, more home sales, yeah. maybe because of those cash buyers and outlying areas, people are more and more comfortable now living in outlying areas. And so those places have now become better financial investments right. for for homeowners. Yes, right. absolutely, absolutely. Right. So we're going to see as you see that, I think the triangle as a whole is going to continue to see the upward pressure and and, uh, and the peripheral neighborhoods around those will continue to see that as well. Cool. So we know this is confusing. <laughs> we know it can be a, a harrowing experience to try to dive into the real estate market and try to understand it now. Uh, and we're here to help. So 
We are Bill Stevenson and Ken Cannon with Spotlight Realty. Talk to us or any of your Spotlight agents, and we'll see if we can help you. Thanks a lot. Until next time. Bye.